On quite a few occasions, I've pointed out that repetition uh, can be death uh, for a show. Primarily a show, a movie franchise, when typically there's a, like a trilogy or what have you. Eh, somewhat. But a TV series, and it's a hard thing to avoid. In fact, it's almost impossible in some cases. And in that point, it, 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 how do you navigate it is uh, the amount of charm that your particular narrative or story or character has, in this case, uh, Doctor Who, uh, which quite a few doctors have managed to achieve that one way or another. I, of course, with Tom Baker being my doctor, <laughs> think he's the master of it all. <laughs> no, not that master of, of, of achieving that. And quite literally, uh, you know, he did. He's one of those leading uh, man characters of, of any given series. And you can go across the spectrum of a lot of different shows and whatnot where he had to carry it. Uh, but nevertheless, that's one of the things you kind of have to do. And if you've got enough of that, then you can kind of plow through, which is obvious, repetition of things you've seen before. And in the case of Doctor Who, it's a lot. And yet, for the most part, uh, certainly in the classic era, <laughs> charm and just style of it and just the concept of, you know, the TARDIS and the, the eccentricity of, of the Doctor uh, carried the day. Um, and, uh, and and whatever the situation was uh, in that. I mean, Pertwee's era is most notable because he was trapped and he had to, you know, uh, work for the Brigadier and that sort of thing. Yes, I know it was ripped off from a, a, a quarter mass, but nevertheless, the template uh, functioned uh, for it primarily because by the time at the end of Troughton's run, uh, you were getting into repetitive <laughs> elements, which, again, with Troughton, you had, you know, the, the charm of his approach to the Doctor that carried the day and all that. So uh, it's a matter of the success. How much uh, did you do that? when you're approaching something very similar. Now here they had locked themselves in with the master being basically, not basically, he was a regular cast member of this TV series. So of course he was always there and the battle was always, well, there's something wrong. Well, but that, at a certain point, it's like, all right, where's the master? <laughs> yeah, I would have thought if they'd have done every other one, you know? And it would have been cool if they'd have done one where they thinks it's the master and the master was like, I've got no idea what's going on. <laughs> it wasn't me. I don't know. And then, of course, tries to take advantage of it and all that. Uh, but, well, didn't happen. So, of course, here uh, he's up to no good, even though he's in prison. And the doctor decides to go uh, visit him. And that sets off. Uh, well, it sets off with the doctor. You're already aware there's a problem going on with uh, ships uh, sinking and disappearing and all that. And then, uh, yeah, the master is well aware of what's going on and is plotting uh, uh, in, in coordinates with it. So what this is is a follow-up to a previous story, and it's basically the same story just shuffled around. I think they shuffled it around enough here, uh, somewhat. And you, This is a follow-up to the Silurians. Uh, this is their cousin race, the Sea Devils, because... Silurians was taken <laughs> and they, and they're just going to have to take the nickname that they were given <laughs> you know devils from the sea <laughs> so uh, once again it's the same story of this uh, reptilian race that existed long before man and uh, put themselves in deep hibernation to, uh, to survive a great catastrophe which uh, you have to assume is like the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs, which would have been their cousin animals, like, you know, uh, apes and chimps or our cousins or what have you. And uh, they awaken to discover, oh, no, the monkeys have evolved and become man <laughs> and taken over the world. <laughs> and it doesn't sit well with them, so they want the planet back. So the Silurians are in the ground. But the sea devil, devils, of course, well, they're, they're under uh, the ocean and all that. So... So with them being from uh, under the ocean, this is going to involve the Navy and all that. And so you have this, uh, I think he was an admiral. 
maybe a, a captain. I can't remember. But anyway, he's the stand-in for uh, the, the brigadier. Uh, all he, all the lines that would have been the brigadier is his. <laughs> but, it, you know, it involves the Navy, so they just didn't bring the brigadier along. I, he could have been there, and he's coordinating with... Uh, naval commanders and all that but what have you i don't know uh, uh nicholas courtney uh was on vacation I <laughs> and so that's the deal and uh, but this time the master's involved and of course he's manipulating it and he wants to use them uh for him to come in and conquer the planet and all that sort of thing uh, and, of course, it backfires on him and what have you. The doctor, of course, tries once again to work out a deal. Almost succeeds, but it all blows up and whatnot. And so it's the same thing. Uh, it's not quite as serious as... Uh, because at the end of the Silurians, where he's so angry with the Brigadier, uh, who the Brigadier is the one who decides to go ahead and attack and uh, you know bury them all in the caverns below... And, of course, I argued at the time, it was like in his position, you could certainly understand why he did and what was happening and what the Silurians had done. Uh, but uh, the doctor, well, that was murder. Well, he got over it for the next episode. <laughs> you know, here, it's the same thing, and he's got this oafish idiot guy who comes in and is wanting to nuke them all and all this sort of stuff. And of course, when he actually confronts Sea Devils, he's a he, uh, he's a crying coward and hides and all that type of stuff. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> uh, uh, but still, ultimately. Uh, in order uh, to survive, defeat the master and everything, and he can't argue uh, his point anymore with the Sea Devils. They don't trust him. Uh, ends up destroying them himself. <laughs> so, yeah, he's, he, he's changed a little bit. <laughs> Since last time. I mean, he was in this position. What was he going to do? And that sort of thing. Uh, in fact, almost... Uh, could have sacrificed himself in this. He had an idea of how to get out, and it works, and all that. But, you know. Finally, the Master escaped. So, of course, the Master, at the end of the Demons, was arrested and sent away. Um, and so that's how they... Well, where's he? what's he been up to? They go and visit him in his prison cell and all that. So this is... Uh, he escapes. Of course, he had manipulated this guy and all that sort of thing, who was convinced that uh, the master was a way to, uh, you know, save Britain and humanity and all that. What have you. Uh, but, of course, he was bamboozled. Uh, but the master escapes. How? Well, he he always has a handy rubber mask. <laughs> uh, especially one that's uh, it looks exactly like him. Why would he have that? What? <laughs> Because what's the point of disguising yourself as yourself? No, no. He disguised another guy that he hypnotized to pose as him and uh, pulled this stunt where it seemed like he was injured and sick and dying or what have you. And uh, fools even the doctor until he gets a good look at him and realizes it's a rubber mask, pulls it off, and, you know, oh, the, and he looks and, oh, the master gets away in a hovercraft. Which they don't go that fast, so you probably could have caught him, but... <laughs> Turns out it was the TARDIS all along. His TARDIS, you know. No, it wasn't. But nevertheless, uh, all in all, fine. Uh, they go through their emotions and whatnot, and uh, it plays out. But it is uh, a repeat of the other uh, story in the sense of what's the plot of the Sea Devils. Well, it's the same thing as the Silurians. They want the planet. And so that's the kind of thing as you go. And if there's another one, well, they still want the planet. You know, uh, all that sort of thing. And it's just the means by which uh, the paces you put through it. So here uh, they chose it to be a, a naval battle of sorts uh, and that sort of thing uh, instead of, uh, you know, underground mines and stuff like that. So I think it's fine. The curious and odd thing about it was this is the one where they did the experimental music. There's been a bit of that in Pertwee's era here and there, uh, but this one was where they went full on and uh, never go full on with experimental music. 
<laughs> Especially in that era. I, didn't, I mean, like the theme song itself with Delia Derbyshire's weird uh, approach and how she built the sounds to make it truly sound alien, which they've never been able to uh, uh, beat at, to the point that I kind of wonder why I even bother. You know, it's interesting the different versions of the theme, but you're never going to beat th that original take that is just so weird, you know, sounding and everything. Uh, but an approach like that, which probably would take a lot more work and whatnot, instead of just all these electronic uh, noises and everything, it's distracting to the point that it, it gets easily confused with just the basic sound effects that was going on in the story. So, I mean, you're... <laughs> You know, and I mean, some of it was kind of obvious when the sea devil shows up. You know. <laughs> Something like that goes on. And it's like, what the hell? <laughs> so I appreciate the approach. I just think it was a mistake. A uh, little bit here and there as sort of, uh, you know, a bit of percussion or a little uh, uh, accessory to the to traditional music would have been much better. The only other uh, entity I can think of at the moment that attempted this was Forbidden Planet, which was a great movie, but that weird stuff, you know? <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, that was odd. Uh, but, uh, you know, they tried. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> But anyway, uh, a lot of it, in fact, the costumes of them, they come out of the water and everything and the way they shot it, it's pretty good for, you know, the classic Who era is very cheap and they, they only had with what they had to work with and some were able to make that work and some weren't. But in this case, they kind of sort of did. Even the, And some of the scenes with the model of the submarines and whatnot, that's not bad. You know, for what it is, especially when you see others where, well, <laughs> the photography just can't seem to give the illusion that this is not a little toy. <laughs> but in this case, and of course the added business of lighting and it's supposed to be underwater and all that sort of thing, uh, works out fairly well here and there. Uh, on their escape, it's a bit much, but nevertheless, you know, not bad. It's okay. So, uh, this is an okay Doctor Who adventure, even though, uh, admittedly, uh, it is very repetitive. But that's to be expected a lot. Uh, it's just the means by which uh, they uh, perform it. And I wouldn't say it's a slam dunk or anything, or a home run, if you will. Uh, but I thought they did okay with it. So, there you go. The Sea Devils. <laughs> 